What's up, my pilots? Angry Poncho here. We're back playing. Actually, we're not back. This is just going to be some Minecraft. So, in this episode, I want to demonstrate a little something, and it's the way that I like to start off a hardcore world. And the method is called uh, bed and bread. Uh, so, the way that I like to do this is I guess we'll go with uh, default world, structures on, random seed. And let's get right into it. So this will be a hardcore episode here. It'll probably just be the one video, because I want to demonstrate how I like to start. So there's really no point in noting a spawn point here, unless you intend to beat the Ender Dragon in return. So, you know, you can always just pop a screenshot if you really want. So the first thing that you want to do is be aware that the easiest way to die in hardcore is... Uh, well, at least in the first day, is of hunger. So I have a few things that I'm looking for right now. I want to punch as much grass as possible in order to collect lots of seeds so that I can start a wheat farm. Because the whole motivation for this strategy is we want to have a bed. I see some sheep. That's good news. Oh, look, all my sheep I need right there. Perfect. So I want to make a bed, and then I want to grow some bread. That's, that's why it's called bed and bread. So you sheep, unfortunately, I'm not going to make shears. I'm just going to punch them until they give me that wool. I could make a sword if I wanted to make this go a little bit more quickly. In fact, we w I think the minimum that you're going to need for this strategy to be successful is the, uh, the wood of one tree, uh, which is just to make the bed and the hoe. And then you're going to need to find at least three sheep or fewer than that if you have the resources to make shears. Uh, you're going to need one square of water, which can be anywhere, so even just laying in the ground somewhere would be fine. doesn't need to be in a bucket. It can just be on the ground, like I said. And then you're also going to need some to find some seeds so you can grow your... whatchamacallit... your bread. So I'm going to make a sword, and I'm going to make a pick. I guess I'm going to need a hoe, too, so I'll go ahead and do that, making sure I have enough wood left for my bed. I do. That's good. Let's take this with us. I see more grass over that way, so I'm going to head in that direction. Now, the beauty of this strategy is that once you have a bed, you don't need to worry about hostile mobs killing you as long as you stay out of caves. There we go. So now we have enough wool to make a bed, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Two pieces of wool, three pieces of wool, put some wood down there, and boom, it's a bed. The wool colors don't have to match, so no worries there. Okay, so now we have a bed. All we have to do is make sure that we can grow some bread before we starve to death. And this is a fairly easy proposition. All we need is some seeds, which I'm not getting a whole lot of seeds from these from the seeds drops from these grass. You want to get at least a dozen or maybe two dozen seeds. Uh, so the, the motivation behind this strategy is, and there are other ways to do this. Obviously, it's easiest to survive on your first night if you just make a sword, kill some chickens, kill some pigs, you know, whatever, and eat, eat the meat. But the whole benefit of this strategy is that it's, it allows you to play as a vegetarian in Minecraft, which is something I like to do. Uh, so I, I don't... the only foods... basically, when I play Minecraft, I try not to let my character eat any meat. That's basically how it works, it's just as you would expect, vegetarian in Minecraft. Now, I, I follow the rules in Minecraft as the same as I do in real life, so I'm fine with eggs, so cakes and stuff are fine. But most of the time, my character just eats bread. And now that the new uh, potatoes and carrots and things have been added, I can have baked potatoes and... Uh, uh, what else? You can make pies now, can't you? Too? Pumpkin pie and... Uh, you can eat the carrots. I don't know. What can you make with the carrots besides... I guess you can bake the carrots? I don't know. So there's all kinds of vegetables and bread, and, and you can even make pie as a vegetarian. So you don't, ha you don't have to kill any of the mobs for, for meat. And that's just nice when you're trying to build a whole base structure that you don't have to worry about, okay, where am I going to house my pigs and you know my, my beef cattle and all that, because you don't need any. There's some water. That's what I was looking for. Goody, goody, goody. So, you can see my hunger bar is down to 9 out of 10. I got 28. I got 28 seeds, so I should be good to go. 
all I need to do is find a good spot to go ahead and start. I'm just going to... Ah, this is perfect. Right down here. It's nice and flat. Spectacular. Uh, we are going to need torches. Ah, but well, there's some coal. Perfect. That works out splendidly. You, you might you might want some torches because that, it's not necessary anywhere, but it will be necessary for me because I'm in an arctic biome. Uh, I'm in the taiga, so I'm going to need to have a torch in order to keep the water blocks from uh, refreezing again. Once I was, I'm, I'm going to plan on breaking some ice and using that as my water source. So I'm going to need to make a couple torches in order to deal with that. I gotta say, I really like. I haven't been playing a lot of Minecraft lately, and I've not been updating the Poncho Pack either. If you're wondering where that's been, so it's, oh, it's sand here. That's annoying. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, make sure that this ice doesn't refreeze. Let's go put a torch right there. Ah, man, appearing in the snow biome makes this a little bit harder, but yeah. So I haven't been playing a lot of Minecraft lately. I actually had a server for my friends for a while, but I recently decided that I wasn't going to continue with that because nobody was really using it. It was kind of going to waste. I could make a shovel if I wanted to do this more efficiently, couldn't I? I suppose so. I'm trying to do it with just the wood from one tree, though, just so that you can do it. So there's something that you have to know about hunger in order to make this strategy really work. And it's that you only lose hunger when you're doing things. If you just stand there, you're not going to get hungry just doing nothing. If you stand in place, your hunger does not go down. So you can see I've already got a nice big farm going here. Remember that a water source, uh, or even flowing water, will make uh, the soil get dark up to four blocks away. So that's why this farm right here... I got 28 seeds, it fills it up just right, it's 4 by 7 and that's about as convenient as it gets. So now, you might be saying, okay, you, your hunger is already going down, what are you going to do? Um, nothing. At this point, it becomes a waiting game. You know, I can plant my tree if I want, it'll grow and give me some more wood, I won't have to go looking for that. But at this point, all I have to do is stand here. Because if I don't run around, my hunger doesn't go down. So all I have to do is wait for this wheat to grow kind of boring, but it's very safe, and that's what you want in a hardcore run. On, on the first night, you don't want to be getting killed, you know, fighting skeletons or something. So if you can get a bed and bread, you would be good to go. So you can see, I did all this b before even... Is that sun going up or down? can't tell because the clouds are moving. It's going down. In just a little more than, I guess, something like two-thirds of, of the day has gone by, and all, I'm already just waiting. My wheat's, my wheat's already growing, so there's nothing much to do at this point. I could build a, a house if I wanted, but I'm not really going to because it's not necessary. I am going to throw down some torches just around here because your wheat is going to need light in order to keep it growing. So I'm going to go ahead and put torches down. But other than that, I think the wheat needs light. I'm pretty sure actually it does. But we're not going to have to worry about nighttime because I already have my bed out here. And I don't have to worry about mobs and things keeping me from being able to sleep. As long as I stay on top of it, stay near my bed, it's just a waiting game from this point on. So it's fairly simple. So that's I'm not going to sit here and wait uh, and let this continue running. Because basically what I would do is... Uh, I guess I could... I don't know. I wish there was a way I could fast forward this. I mean, I could do it in editing, but I wish I could fast forward it in real life so the stuff would grow and time would travel faster. But um, all that all that happens now is I wait. Uh, I let the wheat grow. Whenever the sun goes down, I sleep. I can do some gentle exploring during the day, sort of walk around, look around, scout out where I want to go next. But I'm not going to go around uh, mining or punching down trees or caving or collecting other resources because I don't want to be running around and burning up my hunger. So if you're trying to keep your hunger from going down, the best thing to do is just to stand in one place, keep an eye on things, and don't really go anywhere. You can put yourself on a little platform if you want. You can go up in the air, do whatever you like. But you don't you don't need to do anything special with the bed. You can just throw it down on the ground. No big deal. I'm actually going to move this sapling farther away because I don't want it to grow and suffocate me in my bed. That would be bad. <laughs> so now it's just a waiting game. And that's how, uh, that's how I like to start my hardcore runs. It's just it's a very safe first night. The only things that can go wrong, uh, I guess I should, I, should talk, I should talk about what can go wrong. 
in pretty much any biome you can find this grass. So unless you spawn in a desert, you're going to have a pretty good chance of finding enough grass to be able to get the seeds. And then you're not going to have too much trouble finding one tree. Uh, I would recommend that no matter how far you need to travel, don't sprint because it burns out your hunger really quickly. And you don't want your hunger to be going down. Now, the whole point of this is that you avoid being out at night and you avoid getting hungry and dying from starvation. So just you know, pay attention to that. So don't worry about not being able to find a tree. Just keep walking in one direction. If you're in a desert, go ahead and walk in one direction until you can get out of the desert. And then uh, finding water is typically not hard. It's not really a problem. Even in a frozen biome, all you need is one torch to keep your, your water from refreezing. And you don't even need to worry too much about not being able to find coal now that charcoal is available. Like it's almost time for me to go to sleep here. The sun is approaching the horizon. You don't even need to worry about not being able to find coal anymore now that charcoal is in the game. Because all you need to do is mine eight blocks of, of cobblestone and then make a furnace on your workbench and just put in two pieces of wood and now you have enough coal in order to make enough torches to survive the first night, or charcoal rather. So that's all you need to worry about with that. So I was lucky enough to find some actual coal over there which just made it a little bit easier. Otherwise I would have had to go and punch down one more tree. But typically you can find coal on the first night and if you can't, charcoal is there. And then the other complaint that would probably be that this is a little bit boring and maybe too easy. It's true. But it, it's it, it, I like it because one, it's a it's a vegetarian strategy where you don't have to kill any mobs on your first day to survive, uh, except for the sheep, unfortunately. <laughs> but you're not eating them, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> of course, trying to find iron on the first day and shearing the sheep is a little bit out of the question. So that's just that's just the survival of the fittest, right? One way or the other, the strategy is successful. I would say 95% of the time. The biggest way that it can fail is if you get impatient and you run around and jump up and down and you're waiting for your wheat to grow. Uh, you're just going to burn your hunger out faster than the wheat can grow. The other way it can go wrong is if you can't find sheep. If you can't find sheep, uh, rather than b digging a bed, making a bed, you're going to need to have enough torches to keep your whole farm lit at night, uh, and then you're going to need to just dig yourself a hole. And or or build a house as would be the more appropriate strategy. So I've I've done hardcore runs where I this was my base for several days. The first few days where all I had was a bed and I just kept it daytime, kept collecting resources, put a chest down, and collected all my stuff together, and then proceeded from there. So uh, let me show you guys. So that's basically all for the bed and bread strategy. So let me show you guys what I've been working on in my hardcore world right now. So I guess I'll start. On the outside here. Oh, is it almost nighttime? It is. That's okay. So let me go ahead and step outside here. I put buttons on these doors because the pressure plates were causing some other problems for me. So basically, I spawned in this huge uh, taiga biome, and I was able to do the bread and the bed and bread strategy. And it worked fairly well. My first few nights, I I didn't have night. I just slept. So now I've built this this sort of inner sanctum strategy, that's what I'm calling it. It's got several walls. I'll go ahead and go up to the top and demonstrate what I mean here. So for a long time I didn't let it turn to night because I didn't want to deal with mobs. And I didn't need any of the drops that mobs were going to provide. So what I did was I, I had a big farm that was uh, right over here I believe and I just let it, it was from one water source block, and I just I let it flow out in four different directions and put a farm all around it as far as the water would fertilize the soil. And I survived off of that bread for a long time. And I'm still eating that, that's that kind of bread nowadays. But now I have a little bit more of a, of a safer structure here. I haven't done much, I haven't done any caving. I haven't done any exploring. Uh, all I've done is, is I've focused on making a very secure home base, which at this point is pretty much still in the bare bones stage. It's just a bunch of stuff in one room here. But the big strategy here is that I have two walls. Uh, there's a short four block wall around the outside here. I'll show you how tall it is. So it's four blocks high, and to make it spider proof, I put some upside down stair blocks and then some upside down half slabs up there so that spiders can't climb over the wall. So this is my first line of defense. If anything goes wrong here, like a creeper goes off or 
and blows a hole in the wall or a spider somehow gets across. I have had a couple spiders get in, but that was before I added this lip on the wall. So at this point, I'm almost convinced that it's pretty much spider-proof. A spider, a spider would have to be very, very smart in order to get over this wall now, because I think the only way that they could possibly get in is if they climbed up uh, that tree and then jumped onto that tree and then jumped onto the top of the wall, but they don't really do that, so it's no problem there. I did make sure that there was at least one block of space all the way around, and then I, I cleared out some of the trees that have been growing here. I planted most of these trees, actually. I think all but one or two of them I planted myself. And you can see all the ones I'm growing out there. So I like to live in a forest. I didn't want to go too far from my spawn point just because that was a challenge I imposed on myself. So I have this big circular wall. It's got about, I think it's a 25 block radius. So it's a pretty big circular area for me to live in. And then on the inside, I have a, a wall that's nine blocks high. It has a lip just like this one and a fence around the top to keep me from falling off. And that's my inner sanctum there. So if anything goes wrong with this wall, that's fine. You know, my sheep are out here. They're kind of just free roaming in this open area that I have. No pens. And then inside here, uh, and of course, both layers have iron doors for extra security. You don't want zombies knocking in. This was the house I lived in for a while before I built this whole structure around it. This is the center of the whole complex. This is this piece of cobblestone just to mark it. And then on top of this, I have a nine block high wall, like I said, which allows me to have a, a two stories on the inside here and then a nice sized roof on top. I think I might put my farm up here, or maybe, I'm not sure what I, want to, what I want to put on top, but I like having this circular tower because I made it tall enough that I can see over my outside wall and look out into the other areas around here, and this is a world where I chose to make the biomes extra large. So it's snow as far as the eye can see in all directions, which I like. I like to be in one kind of biome. I think it makes it more interesting, more challenging. So you might have noticed the name of this world was Hardcore Number 2. That was because my first attempt, I, I failed at the bread and bed strategy because I was impatient and was running in circles and jumping up and down, climbing up and down uh, slopes, <laughs> waiting for my bread to grow the first night, and I basically ran myself into hunger and died. So I felt kind of dumb about. So these panels here, excuse me sheep, I don't want you to fall in, are probably the most dangerous thing that I've done so far is dig these vertical shafts which I'd like to, at some point, replace in, in something with, with a safer way of descent, but I don't really know of one. So as it is now, I just take short little skips and jumps down to the bottom here. So I've dug out this entire area, which is just a block, short, uh, a block smaller on each side than the ring up top. See, this gives you an idea of how big the open area is up top. It's hard to tell with that other ring in the middle. But this is how big the open area that I cleared out was up there, and I made it perfectly flat by shoveling a lot of dirt and placing a bunch of dirt to make it a more uh, friendly landscape. So this is one of the reasons I wanted to show you this. So something weird happens here. I have the, This is totally unmodded. I have the Void Vog turned on, of course, because there's no way to turn it off unless you mod. This is an unmodded game. I'm not playing with the Poncho Pack because I've stopped updating the Poncho Pack. I just kind of... A bummer, but I just didn't really have time, and I wasn't playing enough Minecraft for it to be worth it. Plus, I eventually want to do a Feed the Beast run, so I won't be playing that with any mods, because, or with any poncho pack, because I can't tell, I don't have the textures for all the modded items. So here's something I wanted to ask about. This is kind of weird. So I'm standing over here underneath one of my shafts, where there should be light coming down, but it doesn't, it doesn't get down here. So it's, I look around, and everything's dark, just like Void Fog. But then, if I walk over here to this area everything lights up. What's up with that? I don't understand what, what's happening there, because this, this shaft is exactly the same as that one over there, but the other three, the room lights up, and that one, it doesn't. And I've never seen the Void Frog recede like that. So now when I go back into the middle, I move away from that mine shaft, or that chunk, or whatever it is. But see, even now, I'm, I'm not very close to it, but the whole area is lit up, so I really don't know what the, what the deal is. What the deal is here. So maybe you guys could clue me in on as to what's what's going on with that. But yeah, so that's that's all I've done so far in this hardcore world. I got my 32 levels from mining out that whole area there, and all the resources that were in it. And now I'm working on doing the same thing again on the next layer. And I'm going to do it over and over again on the various layers as I work my way up, because my intent is to completely dominate these chunks before I explore anywhere else. Because what I want to do is make sure that. There's absolutely no way 
that any mobs can appear in these chunks. I essentially want to dig all the way to the bedrock over this whole circular area that I now have claimed. And on that whole zone, be assured that there are no mobs from bedrock to the build limit. So I have a perfectly safe inner sanctum here, which is very cool. But that's, that's about all I've done so far in this hardcore world, besides lure some sheep in and gather some wool from them and do some dying. But that's just for fun. Of course, the whole thing is just for fun anyway. It's one of those stupid statements where you immediately like, hmm, that was mm, kind of dumb. So yeah, that's basically what I've been doing in my hardcore world right now. I'm kind of just rambling now. But uh, so that's the bread and bed strategy, and this world was a world where I started with that strategy and was very successful. Right now, I don't even have a farm currently put in because I've got so much bread from my previous farms that I, I made, so I'm good to go for a while before I need to put in another farm somewhere. But uh, I'll give you guys some updates on this world as it progresses, and once I've cleared out the whole area underground, I'll let you know. But that's all I really wanted to show you guys, is bread and bed and what I've been up to in my hardcore world. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any suggestions about this world, if ways I can improve it or whatever else, let me know. I'm always open for new ideas. And uh, if you want to leave a video response showing off your own hardcore worlds, feel free to do so. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.